And it's mail day, so I got this box from M.A. Carbon. Some fun stuff in here. Obviously, you can see right off the bat, I've already unwrapped it, and that this is a steering wheel. We'll get to that in a second, though. I am fairly excited about these. These are the front seatbelt receptacles that I got from M.A. Carbon. Did not know they are two different sizes. This is the passenger. Actually has uh, two wires coming off of it. And then this is the driver buckle. It's the one connector. Uh, so they get OEM parts and then they refinish them in the carbon fiber. And then they've got this really cool leather sheathing here on the buckle, which is nice because on the OEM buckle, you just got the exposed wires. So we're going to put those in. To do the installation, you've actually got to pull the seats out. We'll just call this a front seat removal tutorial for the 911 Carrera style cars. It is a cold, horrible day. Ah, uh, 50 degrees here in the garage. I'm gonna flip my heater on. Uh, I think this is the change direction button. And we're going to fire it up on, uh, let's do a three. There she goes. And a little more light. Hopefully that blows some of that hot air coming out of this heater down. I'm gonna borrow a trick from one of my favorite YouTubers. I can't snap, but I'm gonna go presto majesto. This will probably have a lot of background noise. That's my heater. Sorry about that, but we do have the temperature bumped up to 52 now. When I was ordering the seatbelt buckles from MA Carbon, they asked me what color thread. They said, I have a black interior. Well, black's not black, so they actually sent me this really cool thread catalog. They have all these different colors, and I pulled the uh, thread samples out, and I said, well, it looks like 1283 is the one that matches my car the best. The guys at ME Carbon said, okay, 1283 it is. And uh, honestly, I have no idea if that's 1283, but uh, looks good. Next step here, let's go pull those old seatbelt buckles out. That requires the uninstallation of the seats, and I will show you guys how to do that. So the first thing we need to do is disconnect the battery. We will need to remove these plastic covers off the front of the seat rails. And to do that, you just put a screwdriver in here and you lift that up, and when this is lifted up, this rail just slides off. That's gonna give you access to this Torx screw here, and that's going to need an E12 socket, except I don't have one, so we're going to use a hex head to take those off instead, which you can do. Don't necessarily recommend it, but in a pinch, um, they will fit a Torx. You need a fair amount of leverage to get these Torx screws out. Uh, I've taken my seats out a few times before, so uh, my screws are probably a little too loose. So ideally, you should use a torque wrench so you can measure the amount of resistance and get them back in the right way. So you're gonna remove the two in the front, and then we've gotta slide our seat forward so we can access the two screws in the back. There's four total, and you will have to reconnect your battery to do this if you disconnected it at the start like me. Look at those two bolts in the back. With all the bolts removed, now you can take your seat out. I recommend putting a towel over your uh, sills here so they don't get scratched and you'll find one. Then we're gonna lift the seat out. And there's a connector underneath that we need to unclip. Okay, Rapunzel is gonna keep those door sills safe. The best thing to do, in my opinion, is to slide the seat all the way back and then tilt it up so that you can access the bottom here. And right here is the uh, wiring loom that comes into the seat, and you're gonna disconnect the harnesses that attach to the seat. And the first one is right here. So you're gonna pull that, and this pops out. Then you've got one more that runs in over here. So we're gonna go to the other side and get that. 
And here on the other side, you have got this one, you just squeeze the top and pop it out. You have to pull this piece out. And then you can remove your seat. I scratched my steering wheel. If I wasn't literally replacing the steering wheel today, I would feel kind of bad. All right, our seat is out. Okay, so the old seat belt is removed. Uh, it took me a while to figure out how to do this, so when I do the instructions for removing the seat belt from the car, I will do the passenger side. This one is the driver's side seat belt. And then just for comparison, this is the new seat belt from MA Carbon. So you can see that they, they refinished the seat belt in carbon fiber, and then they give you this nice leather sheath, which kind of covers up these uh, ugly wires. I always felt like this wire coming out of the seat belt was in some ways the ugliest part of the car. I've got some felt to put in the back of this side so that it doesn't rub on the console. But these are the two seat belts side by side. So I have the new uh, driver's side seat belt installed. Just so you guys know where the cables go. Uh, I actually broke this little piece off, but they go through here, they snake down this way. They go behind this boot, and then they come up into this, into this box. And this front part is where the harness that's inside of the car plugs into the, the seat. And this is the, uh, the end of the cable that attaches to that seatbelt buckle. There's a series of little zip ties that hold that cable in. I just cut the OEM ones and I used my own, just zip tied them back uh, all the way down. You could probably go by the replacement clips. They actually have a zip tie built into a little uh, plastic piece that plugs into the frame of the chair, but I think these will be just fine. This is an 11 16th. This is the end piece for the seatbelt wiring. So it just pops out of here, snakes around through here. The wiring comes up along here, goes around here. The passenger side has two harnesses that you have to unplug. This is the first plug, it goes in this yellow harness. And then the second plug, you can see that is in here. There's a fork right here on the wire and it plugs into here. So you've got to unplug this one too. That's right in between these two motors. Second seat belt is wired in. We've got the harness plugged in here. It runs up along here. We used just aftermarket zip ties to secure everything back in. The second harness is plugged in. Wire runs up here, zip tied again. And now we're going to put the top, uh, top piece back on with the bracket screwed in and put the seats back into the car. Seats are back in, I have not tightened them down yet. I'm going to reconnect the battery and make sure that there's no faults. I'm connected, and my keys. Keys, 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 keys. Good. Looks like that works. Just in case anybody's curious, we are up to 57 in here, but it feels like a solid 63. Go here, go fan, go. I'm going to put the bolts back into the seats, put the covers back on, and then we are going to decide if we need the felt or not. The old buckles have this felt, so I need to figure out if I'm gonna put this felt on the new one. I went to Hobby Lobby and got this adhesive felt so I could put it on the back of the buckles. And yes, I even used the 40% off coupon. Saved, I don't know, 30 cents. I uh, put some felt behind there. Obviously, it would have been much easier if I'd done that prior to installing the, uh, the buckles, but just put those on the edge right where the leather contacts the console. So I think that'll be pretty good. Well, that's it for the front seat belts there. 
I'll do another video of the rear seat belt install when those get here. Probably be a couple weeks. They're redoing the leather. We'll put the steering wheel in next. So we will catch you next time.